Practical Help for Your Digital Life is sponsored by Positech.net, a member-supported service bringing geek-free answers to your burning questions about consumer technology. Hello, and welcome to Practical Help for Your Digital Life. Pam and I are going to be your tech coaches for today's show. We're going to show you how you can simplify your digital life by ditching your regular computer and just using your tablet or smartphone to do everything you want. Today's show focuses on two things many of our viewers already have. That's an iPad and a Google account. Many also have iPhones, and our tips for the iPad work just as well for that. And don't sweat it if you have a different brand of smartphone or tablet. Our coaching tips can be easily adapted to your brand. We'll recommend just a few things you might want to buy to make things easier. But you don't have to spend money to get free from your PC. And you don't have to ditch the computer. We're just going to coach you through making sure all your stuff is available for you on whatever device you happen to be using. First, let's get your stuff, your documents, your pictures, music, photos, all in the cloud so that your devices can get to it. You can use any cloud-based storage provider. We're focusing on Google because so many people already use it for email and because it offers some great benefits when it comes to your photos and video. You could also use Dropbox, SugarSync, SkyDrive, or a bunch of others, but we think Google offers the best options for most people. If you don't use an Apple device, you might use Google Play or the Amazon Store instead. But since you're using an iPad or iPhone, or both. You're already in the Apple iCloud world, so you'll continue to use iCloud for cloud-based storage of all your music and iTunes media. Where iCloud falls short, we'll let Google pick up the slack. So our first digital minute is about how to get your Google account upgraded to use Google Drive. We are going to use Google Drive to store all our documents, spreadsheets, and other stuff. If you already have Google Drive enabled, you can just skip ahead to the next part of our show. Here's how to set up Google Drive on your Google account. Hi, this is Pam Morlenz. I'm going to show you how to set up Google Drive on your computer and get all your personal files onto it for use on your other devices. The first thing you do is go to your Google account and click on the Drive item at the top. That's your online Google Drive location. See the link at the left to install Google Drive on your computer. With Google Drive installed, there will be a folder on your computer. Whatever you put in that folder is also copied to the online Google Drive and vice versa, with the exception of pictures, videos, and music, meaning everything that's in your Documents folder can go into your Google Drive folder. Now you will see a Google Drive Sync icon on your PC or Mac that will also tell you the status of synchronizing files between your computer's folder and the online folder. Initially, it may take a while to sync all your files, but once that's done, updating is quick and easy. That's it. Now you can go to your iOS or Android smartphone or tablet and install the Google Drive app and access all your documents. Thanks for watching. Now that you have Google Drive on your computer and all your documents and spreadsheets moved into that folder, they'll be available to your smartphone or tablet. Just take a minute now, grab your iPad or iPhone, or both, and visit the App Store and install the free Google Drive app. Run it and log into your Google account. You'll see that all your documents and spreadsheets are there, and you can view them on your iPad and iPhone. We'll talk more about that later. For now, let's take care of the last piece of this puzzle, your photos, and video if you have any outside of iTunes. Our next digital minute is about how to work with your photos using Google Picasa and how to sync them to the cloud so you can use them on your iPad or iPhone. Hi, this is Pam Willens. Let me take a minute to quickly go over how to set up Google Picasa and sync your photos with online albums you can use and share. Before you start with Picasa, you should take a few minutes to pre-organize your photos. If they're not already, move them all into your pictures folder. Now go to picasa.com 
download and install Picasa on your computer. It is a good idea to always put new pictures in your pictures folder. Let Picasa run to scan your computer for pictures. While you're waiting for Picasa to upload your pictures, you can use the top right sign in with Google account to link Picasa. You only have to do this once. On the settings option on the sync to web slider, be sure to set the size to be original size always. So in the future, those pictures can be downloaded and printed. If you want more detailed instructions on what we've covered, please visit our website and become a member of Practical Help for Your Digital Life. Members have access to all our tip sheets and Practical Help instruction sheets. Thanks for watching. Picasa is free, and the photos you store in your Google Albums will take up space on your Google Drive. Google gives you a generous 5 gigabytes of space for free. If you're a photo hound like me, he has over 35,000 digital photos. You may want to upgrade to more space. For instance, I pay Google $50 a year for 200 gigabytes of storage space. That's a year, not a month. I've got all my digital photos and a bunch of home movies that I've made over the years stored there, and there's plenty of room to spare. And having them in Google Albums makes it super simple to share them with other people. No need to email low-resolution versions of photos. I can just use the Share button and easily share individual photos or whole albums with my family and friends. Okay, so now you've got all your stuff safely in the cloud, and any changes you make to your stuff on your computer, tablet, or smartphone is automatically synced so the other devices are always up to date. That's great, but let's talk about just a few ways to make using your iPad easier. You might find that you won't need to use the computer at all anymore. We all know that typing on the iPad's virtual keyboard is a pain for anything longer than a few sentences. As we talked about in an earlier show, you can always dictate and have Siri transcribe your words into text. But many, maybe most people, are just a little bit more comfortable with a keyboard. If that's you, you're going to want to purchase a keyboard add-on for your iPad. Here's two that we use and like. The Logitech one is simple and light and easy to use, and your iPad sits on it in a groove that tilts it, which is at a good angle for when you're working at a desk. But you may be the kind of person who likes to use the iPad at different angles, so the Bridge keyboard makes your iPad work very much like a PC, laptop, or MacBook. The hinge can adjust to just about any angle. This is great for using it in cramped spaces like your airplane seat back tray. The Bridge keyboard is heavier and thicker and more expensive, but personally I like it better. It's the one I use for day-to-day -day computer use. Yes, instead of a laptop. You may be interested in a few apps for your iPad that will also make it easier to ditch using your computer. For dealing with your photos, get web albums from the App Store. They have one version for iPhone for $2.99 and an HD one for iPad for $3.99. Right now, we think this is the best app for working with Google Albums. But I bet Google will release their own app at some point. Web Albums requires a one-time setup to get access to your Google account, and from then on, it works very easily. If you're a Microsoft Office user, you should know that there's no app from Microsoft for the iPad or iPhone. We've looked over a few alternatives, and we think that Quick Office Pro HD for the iPad is the best one. It's a little pricey at $19.99, but that way you can edit Office documents, spreadsheets, and presentations right on your iPad. Now, if you haven't got a ton of documents and spreadsheets, you could convert them into Google Docs. Google lets you create and edit documents and spreadsheets right from Google Drive using their own built-in editor. It's simpler than Word and Excel, but works just fine for lots of folks who aren't power users. Or just leave them alone. You can still view them in Google Drive on your iPad. And when you want to create a new document, just do it in Google Docs. That's free, by the way. Just a quick word about printing. Yes, you can do it from the iPad. If you have a newer printer that has Wi-Fi and AirPrint capability, then you can print right from within almost every app in the iPad. If your printer is older, you may need a helper app and a program on your computer to let you print from the iPad through your computer. The top app we've tested is called Print and Share. It's $9.99 in the App Store. But there are cheaper ones and even free ones that you can try out. If they work for you, great. If not, delete that app and try another one till you find the one that works for you.
Lastly, if you're a writer, you may want to use a dedicated word processor that's built for the tablet and smartphone world. You can use Apple's Pages app if you want, or use what lots of journalists use, an app called UX Write. It's expensive, $24.99, but it's perfect for writing that novel you've been itching to finish. So if you've been working on a computer, Mac or PC, laptop or desktop, your ticket to freedom could be an iPad, keyboard attachment, and a few apps. What we've shown you today will get your stuff synchronized across all the computers and devices you use. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll subscribe to our video podcasts on iTunes, YouTube, or Vimeo so you can catch all our shows and both Digital Minutes and Digital Egg Timers individually. Better yet, please become a member at practicalhelp.tv. We hope you find our videos useful and your low membership fee helps us to keep producing practical help on topics where you want some easy answers. If you want to ask questions about your technology or request topics for us to cover in future shows or just want to chat with us, feel free to comment below. We respond to all comments and take our job as your tech coach seriously. We want to help you navigate through the practical use of technology with the least amount of work on your part. Skip the internet search and ask us questions. Our website has a special section called Ask Your Tech Coach just for that. We do the research for you and get you just the right answer to your vexing questions about the consumer technology that you already own and use. Thanks again for watching our show. Please subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, or Vimeo, or become a member at Positech.net.